in this series on the Abhidharma from Venerable Kemadami Sami, Venerable Dr. Kemadami Sami from Shan State Buddhist University in Myanmar. And I must say they've been a very successful series. They've been most interesting and personally for me, very enlightening and helpful. And I assume for many of the audience too. We do hope to continue at some point with these talks as we go forward. But I don't want to take up too much time because time is precious and we want to talk about the Dharma and not about mm. all the VAT in life. But <laughs> many, many thanks. Thank you very much, Kamadan Mustami, for all your very hard work and these wonderful, inspiring talks that will lead to further study. Mm. And the subject of today's talk is Rupa, the analysis of matter and where we go from here. So without more ado, I hand over to you. Madame Sami, and thank you again so much. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Desmond um, Bidduf, the chairman of the Buddhist Society, um, and also for your kind introduction, uh, for your kind comments on the course. Before we start, we are going to pay homage to the Buddha, as usual, by reciting the Mutasa three times together. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa <clears throat> um, <clears throat> today is about matter, mind and matter. So we have discussed about the mind for five weeks. And I only arranged, okay, one week just for today um, to discuss matter. You can see that, you know, from this arrangement, that I'm more interested in the mind. More interested in the mind. I think I have spoken about the mind maybe hundreds of hours. And perhaps this is the first time, the first hour, that I will be dedicating myself totally to matter or to material. <clears throat> I just noticed today that <laughs> I have never given any talk on matter, okay, on its own. This is the first time. And um, for the whole week, okay, I wasn't quite sure. I haven't been quite decisive what to say. So I just uh, <clears throat> sent you some of the, <clears throat> the pages that is one one table and maybe some of the the pages okay from the this book comprehensive manual of abhidharma this is the basic book the root text which i use for this course okay um, you have as far as I'm aware, about three translations of this book. And this is the latest, and I should say the most comprehensive one. By Bhikkhu Bodhi, who is an American uh, scholar, who has translated mainly the suttas and you. Uh, 
um, when I'm interested in matter in material, I'm interested this for the welfare and well being of our physical body and also from ethical point of view. That much is my interest. So today I'm not going to cover everything. I'm just going to explain um, how Theravada Abhidhamma classifies matters, each one, okay? And then how we group them, how we look at them, and then how we look at their causes. So that's about it that I would cover today. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about the clusters of matter, what we say, Rupa Klapa. Um, <clears throat> of course, you know, this, this subject, if you are interested, is available even in uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> so it's not that difficult at all, okay? it's within your reach. And by the way, a more detailed analysis of this book, you can Google it, okay, Theravada Bhidhamma, with Bhikkhu Bodhi's name. He has given many lectures, I think, maybe, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly, maybe 20, more than 20 lectures. And he uses this book. So if you want to follow this text, if you, under, under, if you want to understand the text, you have his lectures online. Okay. I have listened to that myself. <clears throat> But if that's what you're interested in, after uh, this short introduction, the series of uh, series of talks, you know, I would like to ask you uh, to use this book and also listen to that lecture, to those lectures. If you listen to those lectures, that way we prepare you for the next uh, series of lectures that I will do with the Buddhist society, which is a more, a more advanced one. Okay. I will revisit some of the, um, the topic that we have discussed um, before I move on to the uh, more analytic, more advanced um, discussion. Um, but for today, before we look at the list, before we look at, or maybe we, we look at the list first, we look at the, um, Levin, yeah, can you, can you, can you upload the, can you share the table? 28 materials. Okay. So this is, um, how Theravada Abhidhamma looks at it. You have two columns. The first one consists of 18 matters. The second one, only 10. And the title is, is rather, um, okay, sort of jargon, if you like. If you like. Uh, concretely produced matters and non-concrete matters. And <laughs> what do they mean? Um, um, put it this way. Put it this way. <clears throat> the 18, the first column, concretely produced matter, they are uh, real matters. The real material, they stand on that, uh, you know, they stand with their own characteristics. Okay. The other ten, they are not separate matters in themselves. You can see over there, number 19, that's the first one in the. In, in the second column, it's called space. Space is a concept. 
Okay, this is my office, this is my room. I have four walls, okay, in four directions, and above I have a ceiling, and down below I have floor. So based on, based on the wall behind me, based on the wall in front of me, and also uh, left and, and, and right, we develop the idea of space. Spacious, for example. So space, the idea of space depends on these four walls. It depends on others. It does, the idea of space does, does not stand on its own. We look at space, okay, the, the space, what we call <clears throat> the space where the plane flies okay, in, uh, above our head above our head, then we have different other matters before we can consider the idea of space. There is a space, there is no space in the expression uh, that we usually make. Okay, the idea of space is dependent on is conditioned by okay, other, the existence of other matters. So this is an example of non-concrete matters. In Pali is called Anipatna Rupa, okay, not um, um, produced by okay, its own nature, its own characteristic. And you can see bodily intimation, bodily intimation. Oh, before I go there, let me expand a little bit about space. Then what about the wall behind me? In conventional sense, we call this a wall. This wall is matter, is material. But we look at this wall in a more analytical way. So, this wall, when I touch it, the hardness is called the earth element. There's only earth element. And of course, different particles are there, okay, grouping together. Something that binds them together, make them cohere. That coherence is water element, for example. So in this, you have water element also. There's no water to our naked eye, but there's water element working to keep those different particles together. In the same way, there is heat and cold element in there. Uh, the A element we are talking about, we are talking about the characteristics. The um, pushing and um, um, expanding, uh, expanding, that kind of characteristic is what we call A element. So, you know, the idea of matter that we form, we go by. We are not talking about an item, you know. Yes, this book, this book, <laughs> it happened to be about Chittasika. This book is matter, mind matter. This book is matter, not mind, it's matter. It belongs to the group of matter. But the way we analyze this is, is um, from a human perspective. When I look at this, when it's, um, I can feel the hardness. We call this hard cover anyway, conventionally. So this hardness is, uh, is, is what we call the earth element. The earth 
is a good example of hardness, the quality of hardness. But when we talk about the quality of hardness, we are not talking just exclusively about hardness, but we also talk about softness. You see, that sort of thing, that abhidhamma, analysis of matter goes. <clears throat> so if you compare these two tables, bodily intimation, you can look at my hands, okay, my hands moving. Intimation, as we know in English, is the hin is the im. Um, maybe, maybe the appearance. But why I'm moving my hands? Because in my mind, okay, there is a volition, there is in, an intention. In, in, intention that comes out. Okay, explaining this subject matter. So I use my body intimation in order to connect with you. In order to connect with you. So when I'm moving like this, first is my thought, my intention, and then the that when the, that <coughs> um, that. Volition-based consciousness impacts on the wind element, and the wind element is making my hand move. <laughs> you see, I hope it makes sense to you. I'm not trying to make it uh, complicated. Um, uh, so to make it interesting, this is how matter is considered. Bodily intimation is not real matter. It depends on the wind element. And the wind element is caused by, at this point in time, by my intention to speak, to talk, to discuss. We come back to this later, how the mind and the matter are related. But here I just would like to explain the second column, bodily intimation. The same is vocal intimation. When you want to speak, that my mind um, causes my, my voice to come, uh, to, to come out. You see? So that intimation, that vocal intimation, we're not talking about the sound of voice, like we're talking about focal intimation. That focal intimation doesn't exist on its own as matter, as a separate matter. Instead, it relies on others to exist. The same goes with other, like lightness, lightness of what? Lightness of this book. Uh, in comparison with the other book, and this book, um, this book is 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 actually lighter than this book. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, and the, the characteristic, the coming, that's production. The coming is into existence, and the, the continuity and the decay, impermanent. These are all characteristics. They are not, as I have repeated a few times, matters in themselves, stand-alone, uh, independent matters in themselves. So, observing the real matters, the Abhidhamma comes up with the list of ten. Um, we don't call them unreal matter, but we call them we call them non-concrete matters. Matter that exists 
depending on the other methods. The other methods that um, exist on their own characteristic, by their own nature, okay, by their own nature, 18 of them. You can see over there, you can see the list. The earth element, water, fire, air, those four we call them essential, the great attention, essential. They are the fundamental matters. And the other, the other 14, okay, depend on them. Depend on them. So <clears throat> we call them the great essential and then the other 14 <clears throat> we call them the dependent matters. What about the other the 10 that I explained earlier? Um, Bhikkhu Bodhi translates from <clears throat> from Pali as it is a non-concrete matter. But Professor Wang Krunatasa called this in a way that we can understand. He called the ten as the nominal dependent matter. Nominal. Okay. They exist only in our perception. The fourteen, the fourteen part of the eighteen, okay. They are called the real dependent matters. Okay, the real dependent matters. So with this, I hope you can see the. <laughs> you can. Yeah, yeah, you, I hope you start seeing a big picture. Okay, now let's look at sensitive phenomena, meaning the senses, the eye, the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body. Sensitivity is uh, is a translation. We can we may say sense in in ordinary description. The eye, ear, nose, tongue, body. This is clear that they are matters. They are materials. The next group, objective phenomena, they are to correspond with the five senses. The visual form, visible form, okay, work with the eye. The eye sees something visual. And then the ear, you can see the ear goes with the sound the nose with, with smell, and the body with taste. So far, it's clear. Something that needs explanation is tangibility. Tangibility with body, there's a touch. When we touch something, you know, we touch something tangible. If we talk about body, Tangible or touch does it ex okay does it exist on its own? And here Abhidhamma says yes. In which way it says out of the four elements only three uh, can we can come into contact can be touched the earth the fire and the air, not water. So you can see over there, earth, fire and air, three of them. We call them tangible matter. Tangible matter. Three of them combine and they present another, another form of matter. These um, usages, like these ten earth, water, fire, element, you have them in the suttas very often in the discourses. I, 
with form, ear with sound, nose with smell, tongue with taste. Again, you come across very often in the suttas when the Buddha talks about the sense basis, the senses, sense organ, senses or sense organ, and then sense basis. And of course, also all the intangibility. But tangibility is, is played in the Abhidhamma like this. Earth, fire, and water combine. They are called tangibility. And then we have sexual phenomena. This is um, of femininity and masculinity. And then we have heart phenomena that heart base. Heart as the base of consciousness. A lot of discussion, okay, from, I think, at least from the 5th century AD, about the heart. Um, in, 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 in this subject, you know, a lot of discussion. And then life phenomena, the life faculty. Life faculty, we, in the Chittisika, we have mental um, life faculty. That's, that's, even when we are asleep, this faculty goes on. In the same way, with matter, there is, is correspondence, the life faculty. I mean, this book has all its explanation. I, I shouldn't be spending a lot of time, uh, a lot of your time on this, because you can, um, <clears throat> you can just you know, read it on, on your own. But what I'm, what I'm trying to give you is trying to give you um, a big picture, you know, a sense of <clears throat> um, how we look at uh, the materials of matter in Buddhism. You can see here, we, you can look at the list. We are not looking at the matter from the point of view of, say, um, consumption or producing things. We are looking at the list or at the, at the material, at the physical body, from a spiritual point of view. When we do meditation, okay, we have to observe the mind, okay, but, but we can't observe the mind straight away. So we have to observe the channel where the mind operates, that the ear, uh, the, uh, the eye, the eye, the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body. So we observe those activities in order uh, to see the mind and the factors that influence the mind. And when we observe for example, pain. If we break the pain down into the four elements, for example, oh, this is hardness, this hard element, this earth element. And when you see the muscle um, being tense, meaning pulling, expanding, then oh, this is a element. By looking at the, the pain, the sensation in that way, the mind becomes less and less personalized. We don't, we don't say, okay, my leg, my pain. Instead, we look, we, we, we analyze the pain into different matters and see them as something natural. 
So you can see, we look at the matter in order to train the mind. In order to train the mind. So in order to train the mind, this much is efficient, is sufficient. If we look at the, the senses, okay, the mind operates through those senses. If you watch television, your eyes and ears, they, they work more than any other senses. So if you get upset, maybe because uh, you are not guarding your eyes, this, the eye, the sense, the eye sensitivity according to this list. If you get upset sometimes because you listen to something, then you listen to something negative. What you have to do then is to be mindful of what comes into your ears, to be mindful of what comes into your eyes. Like that. And then new treatment. We are not talking about food, you know, different food items. We are not talking about that. We, we, we talk about the, um, I mean, how this body exists. So it needs new treatment. <clears throat> I think this much, this much is uh, enough. Uh, to go through the basic um, analysis of matter. Now, Lavinia, <clears throat> uh, can you can you change to the other a karma as mode of origin? Okay. Okay, we are going to read this together. Now, how do these matters exist? They exist because of the four causes. There are four co cause, okay, causes. The first cause is called karma, karma. So the translation is called karma as a mode of origin. In Pali is called Samutana. Okay. Let me read the translation for you. There in the 25 kinds of wholesome and unwholesome karma pertaining to the sense sphere and the fine material sphere produce in one's internal continuum, volitional condition, material phenomena originating from karma, moment by moment, beginning with rebirth linking. Rebirth linking is the first um, consciousness that happens, okay, in the womb of the mother. Now it says 25 kinds of wholesome and unwholesome karma. Now you need to revisit uh, different types of consciousness. We talk about 89 types of consciousness. I, um, I hate to, to make you bored okay, by revisiting many lists. But here I think I should do it. 25, what are 25? Gamma, so in terms of, in terms of the citta, in terms of consciousness, um, unwholesome gamma, then wholesome gamma. In addition to gamma, what do we have? We have resultant consciousness, that we baka. So we baka, they are not gamma, they are just the result of karma. Many Buddhists, okay, in their popular opinion, they don't actually distinguish between karma and its results properly. Sometimes they are referring to 
the results, but they use the word karma. In the 24, for example, in the 24 um, wholesome, okay, sense sphere, whole, uh, sense sphere, beautiful chitta, 24 of them, you have eight wholesome consciousnesses and eight the results of those wholesome, eight and the results. And another eight, the last eight. They are what we call kiriya, mere consciousnesses. They don't produce karma effect anymore because they happen in the arahant, in the enlightened people. Okay. Those enlightened people, um, they don't do anything in order to achieve something. They don't do good thing in order to bring good karma. Because karma brings rebirth and they know rebirth brings suffering. So they don't want that anymore. So when they do anything good, they do so because their mind is pure. Because their mind is compassionate. They are not doing something because they, they fear. Not because they want something um, from us. If you remember, um, threat, focus, that's out of fear. We do something out of fear. Incentive, focus, that is, we want something. But for the enlightened people like Arahant, their mind doesn't operate in, the, in those modes anymore, in those uh, threat focus on, or incentive focus. Threat focus is dosa, dosa group. Okay, incentive focus is loba group. So we have um, three multiplying, oh no, uh, 8 multiplied by 324, that is the sense sphere, beautiful chittis. And only 8 of them are qualified as karma. We call them as karma, meaning they have the potential to produce results. So we look at that way. Here, 25, what are you going to do? Um, the first is 12 unwholesome chitta. And then we have 8, which I mentioned just now, I explained just now. And then we have another 5, that's from material sphere. In material sphere, you have 15 altogether. 5 of them are wholesome. Another 5, the second 5, they are just result. We call them resultant consciousnesses. And the last five, they are kiriya. That happened in the minds of the Arahant, the enlightened people. So they have not, nothing to do with karma. So only five of them are related to karma. I hope, okay, I'm not making you Bored, okay. <laughs> it's not so boring. Um, if you're interested in the you know, detail, this is rather fascinating to be um, uh, thinking about the, the list in your mind and mutating that sort of thing. We do this when we were young and in order to see the list clearly in our mind, we have to switch off the light. And we, we talk to our teachers and with our, our classmates, okay, in the dark. <laughs> in the dark. Uh, so it's okay if the light went out, it's okay. Actually, we deliberately switch off the light in order to do this. So in Myanmar, we call this evening lesson. The word evening means, okay, it's dark. And 
and uh, you're not supposed to switch on the light. Instead, you are supposed to be to to be thinking about um, the table, like what we mentioned earlier. We have more table, a lot of table, and then to create discussion out of this. Um, is a fascinating way of uh, of studying Abhidhamma as well. <clears throat> um, is 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 a is a way of internalizing, if you like, uh, the teaching, absorbing the teaching. Mm. What about um, the? Immaterial consciousnesses. Wow, we the name is already called immaterial, so they have nothing to do with matter, with rupa. So forget about them. And then, and the super mundane. Okay, once you reach that state, you already go to kriya citta. You don't produce karma anymore for the defilement that you have got rid of, those defilements, they don't produce karma. So when we talk about the kind of karma that produces matter, produces material, we don't talk about them. So we, we talk only about 25 kinds of consciousness out of 89. You need a bit of uh, thinking, and if, if you are, if you can satisfy yourself, um, okay. Um, uh, how we understand karma, and and ultimately how we, in uh, through Buddhist practices, okay, intend to go beyond karma, then you would understand this uh, quite easily. So let me read the guide, okay, guide to number 10. Number 10, this is paragraph number 10. Material phenomena originating from Kama. Kama Samutana Rupa. Kama here refers to volition, Chetana, in past wholesome and unwholesome states of consciousness. The 25 kinds of Kama, meaning here, consciousness, is 25 kinds of Kama that produce material phenomena are the volition of the twelve unwholesome chittas, the eight great wholesome chitta, maha, that in part we call Mahakusila, and then the five five material wholesome chittas. The volitions of the wholesome immaterial sphere chitta generate rebirth in immaterial plane thus cannot produce material phenomena originating from karma. <clears throat> karma produces material phenomena at each sub-moment among the three sub-moments of consciousnesses. What are the sub-moments? Arising, present, dissolution. Earlier we um, we come across the word production, continuity, and decay. Okay. Starting with the arising sub-moment of rebirth linking consciousness, it continued to do so throughout the course of existence up to the 17 my moment preceding the dead consciousness. The 17 moment we haven't discussed this is about momentary theory in the Abhidhamma. I have skipped this and maybe you know we leave this to uh, the next series. It continued to do so throughout the course of its history, up to the 17 
uh, my moment preceding preceding the dark consciousness. Um, I have I have the camera in front of me, so I'm uh, I have to read it from this. Eighteen kinds of material phenomena are produced uh, by karma. The five sensitivity, the five senses, the two sex faculties, the life faculty, the heart base, and space. Okay. Um, nine kinds of now all these nine kinds. Now they go into detail. Um, I think it would confuse you to to to. Uh, to read more lists, actually those lists you can work out on your own if you read this this book and if you listen to big <clears throat> Uh What I'm concerned is to give you a big picture using the big picture that you understand the principle that we discuss so that you can go on study on your own. Um, the reading list that I have given you, you know, they are usually uh, quite easy to follow. So the four courses, one is karma, second one is consciousness, that's my, the third one is like, uh, shall we say climate, um, um, no, like heat and cold like that. And the last one is nutrition. So they are the four causes that maintain this matter, the physical body. Gamma, jitta, that's consciousness, and then udu, that is the good body translates as temperature. And then the last one is nutrition. The second one, just go through quickly, okay. Consciousness as mode of origin. So that is the second, <clears throat> the second cause of, of, of Rupa. What we are talking about here, we, we say matter, or materials or the physical body is produced by these four causes. There's no creator. That's what we say. We can look at the causes here and analyze them. Consciousness as mode of origin. 75 types of consciousnesses, excluding the um, immaterial sphere resultant and the two sets of fivefold sense consciousnesses produce material phenomena origin originating from consciousness, beginning with the first moment of the life continuing, but they do so only after or at the moment of arising. <clears throat> Without going into detail about seventy five. Okay. Because uh, if you read carefully, over there is already <clears throat> um, clear what it says. Uh, we always exclude the immaterial because we are talking about material. And something that um, might surprise you is the two sets of fivefold sense consciousnesses. Um, they are um, they are re <clears throat> they are resolved, and you can see you can see the um, explanation over there. Bhikkhu Bodhi Guide to Number Eleven. Now let's go to temperature as mode of origin. Uh, Lavinia, the next page, please. Thank you. Oh no, you jumped one. Maybe I, 
I missed out. What well, maybe I didn't send you. Temperature as mode of as a mode of origin. Do, do you have that? If you don't have it, it's okay. I'm just going to read it. <clears throat> the fire element which comprises both coal and heat on reaching its stage of presence produces according to circumstances both internal and external material phenomena originating from temperature. This is to say that temperature also has impact okay, on the physical body. Not just our physical body, but also the material outside, the plant, for example. I, I don't think this is um, um, a typical thing to, to see, you know. We talk so much about global warming these days, so... <laughs> um, you know, how life changes um, from the temperature. The world has been uh, trying unsuccessfully uh, to do something about this. You know, all the Kyoto, Paris, and and, and, and uh, all those uh, agreements. You know, some of the important countries have not signed them, not implemented them. Uh, the last one is nutriment as a mode of origin. I just wanted to read uh, a simple translation here. Nutriment, known as a nutritive essence, on reaching its stage of present, produces material phenomena originating from nutriment at the time is swallow. So when we swallow food, um, then the nutrition in that food changes our up. Our body has an impact on our body. We don't need to talk about it. It's so evident. It's so clear. When we are hungry, when there, there's no food, here it doesn't talk about food, it talks about nutrition. So when there's no enough nutrition, what happens? We know exactly what happened. And if we take in wrong nutrition, what happened? We know it. So, so. Abhidhamma is interested in this as well. I'm, I'm going to conclude with uh, one last um, uh, short discussion. One chapter in this, uh, one section, sorry, one section in this chapter is called classification of matter. I'm not going through how we classify as internal, external, because the description needs no explanation. It's just so uh, clear if, we, if, if you read them. For example, the eye is internal, the visual object is external, the, the ear is internal matter and sound is external. This kind of thing is just uh, so simple. <clears throat> but he, yeah, something interesting to me, uh, what I would like to share with you is um, uh, how we classify them in relation to the mind. Earlier we have just dis discussed how the mind also changes the matter how the mind impacts the matter, okay? In addition to karma, in addition to temperature and nutrition. But this one um, is more psychological in, in terms of, in terms of um, um, uh, its presentation. I'm going to I'm going to read the translation. Okay, I didn't send this to Odin, so I'm just going to read. It's from page 243. The title of the section is Classification of Matter, Rupa Vipaga. I, I quote, okay, I read the translation. 
Now, all this matter is single fold, meaning it has it has single fold, manifold, um, and and so on. It goes by the number, but I'm just picking up the first analysis, the category of single fold. Okay. Now, all this matter is single fold in so far as it is all. Number one, rootless. When we talk about root, the root of consciousness, it's the root of negative emotion, they are greed, hate and anger. But when it comes to matters, when it comes to my eyes, no roots. No negative or positive root. They are rootless. We see we have seen 18 rootless citta or consciousness. Now this is also um, all the matters and they are also rootless. Positive roots like generosity, loving kindness and wisdom. Okay. These material, these matter, they have nothing to do with those positive roots either. Not with negative root or positive root. What does it mean ethically? When you see an angry person, his eyes red. You can't say his eyes are evil. <laughs> because his eyes as material, they don't have roots, unwholesome roots. Okay. When somebody is smiling, you can see the person's facial complexion is very pleasant. But when we say the face has a lot of loving kindness, a lot of metta, as it's not the face. The face, if we refer to the matter, the material, they are rootless. They have no metta. The metta is in the mind. The mind has roots. Then, when the, the face is so pleasant because somebody is mine, that face, at that moment, the facial material, the, the, the matter, which is the face, is being produced by the mind. You see? Being produced by the Uh, to put it like, say, if somebody murder, murders okay, somebody else with a knife, a knife which is material, okay, is not evil. The hand of that man who holds the knife, the hand, the hand in itself, which is these materials, these matters, they are not evil either, they are not unwholesome either. Meaning, you cannot apply ethics to the material. Then, what is evil, what is unwholesome? It's the mind of that murder. That murder. So, this is to distinguish between mind and matter. Not sure it is interested to you. <clears throat> Rootless, and the second, with condition. All these roots, they all have condition. No one creates them. Okay, they all have condition. Subject to taints. Taints means here defilements. Although they themselves have no unwholesome roots, this material they can they can uh, defy your mind. They can make your mind negative. You see, that's what it says. Condition. They have condition to come into existence. Mundane, mundane, that, that is uh, uh, clear. Okay, they are not an achievement, spiritual achievement. So, um, when we meditate, the real intention is uh, not to change the body, the body not to change the body to achieve enlightenment. It's the mind that achieves enlightenment. 
for achieving enlightenment, you you reach you reach supramundan level. So the matter or the physical body doesn't reach that. It has nothing to do with enlightenment. Pertaining to sense, sense sphere. Okay, it works with senses. Objectless. This is okay. My eyes focus on visual object, but the one that takes the object. That really take the object is consciousness, is my, not my eyes. My eye is just the base. So this is how we analyze the mind and the matter. Not to be abandoned. Well, okay. We should abandon our anger, our hatred. Something to get rid of. But matter, because they are neither evil or wholesome, wholesome, neither wholesome or, or no unwholesome. Not, so they are not something we we should achieve, not something we should abandon. We should abandon the negative roots of. The mind that, that like negative emotion, negative habits in the mind, like that, they are the thing we we need to abandon. But the matter, the material that we discussed today, we don't need to abandon them. This is to say, when we purify the mind, when we do meditation, we the physical purification. It's not part of it. <laughs> Some, if you compare this with the Indian, non-Buddhist Indian tradition, they are very interested in physical purification. You might have heard of, <clears throat> some of you might have heard of uh, the tradition in, in Nepal. Okay, if um, women menstruate, they are not even allowed to 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 live in the house. They have to live in in the you know in a hut or in a shed uh, in the garden like that. That's because they believe physical purification that sort of thing. We don't have it, and you can see people. Um, dipping themselves in the um, river Ganges, because by doing so, they say they they can they purify themselves. The Buddha said that's nonsense. Udaka Suti, that water purification, is is not logical. We need to purify the mind. So Abhidhamma <coughs> follows this principle. That is why he says there's nothing we have to abandon. Um, with matters. There's no purity, impurity in terms of matter, only in terms of the mind. We talk about purity, impurity, and the need for purification. I hope I have managed to interest you a little bit, okay, with this. Okay, maybe um, we can have about ten minutes discussion because tomorrow morning we have to go get up early and start um, chanting twenty-four hour chanting at four thirty in the morning. Now is uh, is eight p.m. plus. <laughs> so so any question? Any question? Thank you so much for this talk, Venerable. I will ask you some questions from the chat. So, the first question we have here. Thank you for a wonderful course. But before we go to the more detailed questions about the Abhidhamma, 
could you give some advice for just a few simple things we could do every day to try and cope with our anxieties uh, as we go into the second wave of this pandemic? And this is from Odin. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to I'd like to refer you to um, Dr. Tara Brush, okay, in America, who has a PhD in, in clinical psychology and a Buddhist meditation teacher. Um, she <clears throat> she has produced a diagram uh, from within how to reach out okay so it has three zones the first zone is the most narrow one the narrowest one the most confined one is called fear zone fear zone when we talk about fear in abhidhamma we talk about dosa in the jeddasika we talk about dosa and Dosa has his, his uh, associate also. So without going into the list in detail, we talk about fear. With the COVID, we talk about fear. What do we do when we fear? I have the list here. I think um, after this, I will send to... Um, I will email Odin so that you can also share with other people. What happened in the fear zone? We panic by, we buy through panic. <clears throat> Such as toilet paper, food, medicine, and something we don't need, we still buy because of fear. And what do we do out of fear? We act like a victim. We just like to blame. So after listening to uh, radio, after um, watching television, something that comes to our mind, something that we usually do is we blame. If this blaming habit comes up easily, okay, comes up easily, we have to be careful. We have to practice mindfulness, breathing in and out, come back to the breathing, to center our mind, to stabilize our mind, so that fear doesn't become overwhelming. Sometimes, because we're in the fear zone, we also get irritated very easily. If you lose your patient very easily, or if um, negative attitude, negative uh, emotion arises quite easily, then you need to know that you are in the fear zone. Sometimes fear also pushes people to search information, okay, um, even if it's the same, you have it, you have the same on the BBC website, on the CNN website, on Yahoo website, on, um, you know, many newspapers website. But then you search and share. Every, every piece of news about COVID. If that's your behavior, then uh, fear starts overwhelming you. So the first thing is to be mindful of fear. Because with fear, as we know today, through Abhidhamma and also through neurology, Abhidhamma says consciousness produces or, or changes matter, changes the body. We have just discussed. Okay, consciousness as a motor origin. In clinical psychology and neurology, you say the same. If there is fear, if there's anxiety, what happens is that mm, the amygdala, which is matter in the brain, is more active. 
is related to phi. Fight and flight mode. So first is to, uh, to acknowledge fear and then to return to breathing, to acknowledge fear and return to breathing. If we do that with, <coughs> with mindfulness, we can move to, we can expand um, um, reflection, uh, we can actually reach out more. And Tata Tara Brush calls this as learning zone. From fear zone, we go to learning zone. In the learning zone, we accept that a lot of things are uh, out of control. Maybe we can't control. We want to control everything. Okay. Maybe we can't control. Because we cannot control, that is why COVID uh, pandemic happens. Before it, a lot of other pandemics have already happened. So no one is really in control. There's no one with remote control and, and, and who um, you know, arranges everything in the world. There's no such almighty things. Things happen based on human uh, <clears throat> uh, psychology, human behavior. So in the learning zone, what we do is that we start reflecting, examining our behavior. Our behavior. Um, something that, that causes harm, we don't do. Meaning, if I'm watching television non-stop, watching the COVID-19 news non-stop, uh, and it upsets you, then you will reduce that. You may watch any news. They are very, very um, repetitive. Okay, morning news, uh, lunchtime news, uh, afternoon news, uh, late night news, they are all very repetitive. Um, by listening to them again and again, actually we absorb a lot of negativity. So we will become more selective. This is the learning zone. And also what we eat, what we drink. We start, in the learning zone, we start um, planning our time properly. And we recognize uh, something positive that everyone is doing their best. You may agree or disagree with the Prime Minister, but he's doing his best. Okay, and more than 200 groups of scientists, virologists, they are you know, trying their best uh, to come up with a vaccine. And with your taxes, your ta taxes, the government manages them and support those things that happen in every country. So in the learning zone, actually, we start seeing some opportunity that come from COVID. Opportunity to reflect, opportunity mm, to reflect on human behavior, how we treat animals, how we treat our environment, how we treat each other. Um, the mode of um, economics that we use. Okay. After 10, 12 years, 15 years of growth, then maybe 8 months, 9 months of economic inactivity, okay, we almost collapse. So that kind of thing that we can reflect on. This is about learning, sir. Then, as a psychologist, Dr. Tara Brush, she comes up with growth zone. That's the last one. You have growth psychology where we accept shortcoming and, 
and you know or have the intention to improve so that's growth psychology so she uses the word growth zone so with the covid we can be in one of the three zone fear zone learning zone and growth zone the best is the growth zone We are learning from the, the COVID. It would be a shame if COVID comes and, 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 and goes okay without learning anything from it, without being kinder, uh, without being more reflective, without being wiser, mm, but you know, still quarreling as, as usual. This, this would be a waste. Sorry for the long answer, Odin. <laughs> Okay, maybe just one more, one more question. A little bit near, yeah. Okay. So we have another question from Soimin. Dear Sayado, in 89 Chitta and 52 Chittasika, which one is making us to think uh, our existence? Does awareness make us think that our existence is real? Thanks. <clears throat> Because uh, I, mean, I would like to suggest that you examine the function of Jitasika. Jitasika. Okay. Awareness is one Jitasika. Okay, one Jitasika. Of course, thinking is the function of, of, of consciousness, Jitta. And then. When we think, if we become aware of something, there's already sati, jitasika. By becoming aware of, say, for example, COVID, if we develop fear, now we go into akuslao, unwholesome jitasika and unwholesome jitta. But if we become kinder because of the COVID, now we go into karutna jitasika. And it's associate chitta, you know, chitta and chitta consciousness and mental factors, they always work together. So I think uh, um, uh, it's interesting to observe and uh, to, um, to investigate and, and, and study more about the chitta because they are the one that makes one consciousness becomes 89. If you um, develop more sati, that's mindfulness, and also concentration, ikakata, if the mind becomes very concentrated, very concentrated, then the thinking becomes clear. So we are talking about the thinking process. When we talk about thinking process, we have to think about the constituents of the mind at that time. If, if the constituents uh, have a lot of uh, unwholesome jitasika, you can see how the thinking process will go. Okay, I think um we spent almost 90 90 minutes uh, 85 minutes maybe we can stop here odin is it okay to stop here and let, let me near is it okay um, yes, I think so. Thank you so much, Venerable. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, okay, for joining this course. And <clears throat> um, uh, this is just to give you a big picture. I, I resist, okay, talking. <laughs> I've been going into detail because I don't want to unnecessarily confuse you. Yeah. And if you, if, if you grasp, okay, the principle and a big picture, the rest is, is, uh, is quite, quite manageable. 
the details, you know, they, they are not that difficult at all. Um, especially, um, how many years now since we have this? More than, more than a thousand years since we have this text. This text is a summary of the whole Abhidhamma canons. If we have to study the Abhidhamma canonical text one by one, it will take a lot of time. But this book summarizes everything, or, or nearly everything. And with this, um, we can go into the Abhidhamma canonical text, we can read them. Thank you everyone, I wish all of you, okay, good day back in England and good night in Asia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>